quarantined Christmas. The year I had diphtheria, we were quarantined during the Christmas holidays. My father brought things to us and left them on the porch and waved to me through the window. Mother and Grandma had to stay inside the house. This will certainly be a different Christmas, Mother said. No shopping in the crowded stores. No waiting in the snow. And no tree, I said. No Santa Claus, and probably no presents. I wouldn't say that, Grandma put in. Your father will see that you have a tree and presents, and you already have one good gift. You're getting well. Did I ever tell you about the Christmas we had diphtheria at our house? What happened? Did you still celebrate? Oh my, yes. It wasn't just like all the other Christmases, but it was certainly special. Students, Miss Gibson said, I know you are anxious to talk about the Christmas program, but we do have another half hour of classes. Let's pay attention to our books until dinner time. This afternoon, we'll assign parts for the program and draw names for gifts. The room quieted for a time, but it was hard to concentrate on books. The girls in the fifth through eighth grades were eligible to be merry, and there were only four of us this year. Miss Gibson put our names in a box, and a primary child picked one. That was the fairest way to decide, since all of us wanted the honor. Sarah Jane poked me, then pointed to the row of seats near the window. Your brother has gone to sleep, she whispered. How could anyone sleep when we're planning for Christmas? I thought this was odd, too, since Roy was never still long enough to sleep during the day, but I decided he had gotten too warm and dozed off. He didn't wake up when Miss Gibson announced that it was time to put our books away. My other brother, Reuben, was also watching Roy anxiously, but he was two rows away and couldn't nudge him. I forgot all about anything else when Miss Gibson opened the paper handed to her and said, This year, Mary will be played by Mabel O'Dell. This is the most exciting thing that has ever happened to me in school, I said to Sarah Jane. I can wear the blue robe and hold the baby Jesus. I wish the program were tonight. I'm glad it's you, Mabel, Sarah Jane said, but you'll need to practice a few times. A week isn't long to wait. When the noise of dinner pails and talking didn't arouse Roy, Reuben went over to shake him. Miss Gibson, he said, I think Roy is sick. He's awfully hot and he doesn't want to wake up. Miss Gibson hurried over and put her hand on Roy's head. You'd better run home and get your father to come for him, she told Reuben. He won't be able to walk that far, I'm afraid. I'd sure hate to get sick just before the Christmas program, I said to Sarah Jane. I'll stay away from his room. Maybe Ma can have him cured before next Friday. But when I arrived home in the afternoon, I found that this was not to be. Before I could tell Ma the good news about my part in the program, my world shattered. I'm glad you're home, Mabel, Ma said. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine, Ma. Wait till you hear. It will have to wait, Mabel. I'm busy with Roy. The doctor has been here and says he has diphtheria. We all have to be quarantined. You mean we have to stay in the house? We can leave the house, but not the farm, Ma replied. We can't be with other people. But I have to be with other people for the Christmas program, I said. We'll be able to go out by next Friday, won't we? Ma paused in her hurry around the kitchen and looked straight at me. Roy is seriously ill. We won't be able to go anywhere for the next three or four weeks. I let this sink in for a moment. When the hopelessness of the situation really registered, I began to howl. But Ma! I'm Mary. Don't you understand that I have to be there? What about my peace? They can't have a program without Mary. They can't get along without me. I can right this minute, Ma said grimly. I know you're disappointed and would like some sympathy, but your brother needs me more. We'll talk about this later. I ran to my room and threw myself onto the bed, sobbing wildly. As far as I was concerned, life was over. Not only would there be no school program, but there would be no church Christmas Eve service, no sleigh ride with the carolers, and no day to celebrate with the Clarks. Things were dark indeed. Pa put his head in the door. Mabel, Sarah Jane is waiting for you at the gate. 
You can stand a little way this side and talk to her, but don't go out. I put on my coat and trudged down the lane to where she stood. Did you ever hear of anything worse than this? I said. How could Roy do this to me? You don't think he did it on purpose, do you? Sarah Jane asked. Well, no, I admitted. It's not really his fault, but what will I do? For one thing, you'll have two Christmases, Sarah Jane said. The real day with just your family and another one with us when Roy is well. I know that doesn't help for the Christmas program, but you'll be back in time for the spring program. I'll stop by every day after school with your lessons so you won't get behind. I wish I'd gone home with you tonight, I said. Then I wouldn't be quarantined here by myself. And not have Christmas with your folks? You wouldn't be able to stand that. As I walked back to the house, I saw Pa and Reuben headed for the barn. Ma was lighting the lamps in the kitchen and smoke curled up from the fireplace chimney. I knew how the big room felt and how it smelled of good things cooking. I remembered how patient and comforting Ma had been when I was sick. Sarah Jane was right. What would Christmas be without my family? I was glad I didn't have to find out. I know Uncle Roy got better, I said, but did you really have a nice Christmas that year? Oh yes, Grandma said. Ma was busy, but she found time to bake cookies with me and to sew new doll clothes. Pa and Reuben played games with me, and we set up a little tree in Roy's room. It was a lovely Christmas, just as usual. It always is when you're with the people you love.